Craig Lamb, Stephen Richards, they're not here tonight, but we've got the next best thing. It was a great race yesterday, the Bathurst 1000. Right now, though, round four action here in the official V8 Supercar Series, brought to you by iRacing in conjunction with Race Spot TV. I'm Brett O'Brien. With me, Sam Compton in the booth tonight. Sammy, welcome to the broadcast. Yeah, thanks, Brett, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, here we are, Bathurst, Mount Panorama again. After a fantastic race on the weekend in the real world, now it's time to get it on in the simulated iRacing.com V8 Supercars official series. Yeah, we're really looking forward to this one, no doubt. And the boys tonight, let's face it, they've done a lot of laps of Bathurst lately. It's been uh, pretty much the mainstay of the uh, iRacing program and the official and the uh, hosted sessions as well. And that will culminate this weekend with the iRacing Road Warrior Bathurst 1000. We'll talk about that during the broadcast. But for this race tonight, we've got 33 laps. So it is a long, long race tonight. Pit stop will be needed. Really looking forward to this. Yeah, so am I, buddy. It has been a bit of a Bathurst overload, but uh, I think it's a great time of year to have that. And we've got a great field of drivers here tonight. It's going to be fantastic racing here at the mountain. Yeah, full field, 23 cars. It's uh, great to see so many splits as well. And uh, some new names again tonight. Lewis Parin is with us and uh, a new name as well. So looking forward to see what he can bring to the table. Brenton Hobson saw what he could. David Haynes has been with us a couple of races, but 33 laps, there's just no room for error here. And uh, looking forward to this. Yeah, definitely. We've already had on the screen uh, the, the weather, but we'll just run through it here. It's uh, partly cloudy, 22 degrees. Uh, the track is 36 degrees, so it's not too warm, but it's still pretty warm. And uh, yeah, we've got 22% humidity, so I think it's pretty good weather for some good racing here tonight. Yeah, it is. It should be really good. And we've got uh, five minutes of qualifying to go, and there's some been some pretty good markers laid down already. Sammy Sutton with the uh, Daco car, 205.5, there. He's the uh, 2800s up on uh, Ian Ford Evolution Racing Australia car with Marcelo Rivera, uh, good Jake Maloney. Uh, so that's uh, Sammy Sutton's teammate. They had good success uh, a week and a half ago already. Gee, that goes quick. And uh, actually there's gonna be some changes. Aaron Hamilton's just moved in the third, but like we said, a pretty good field, 23 cars. Yeah, great. Good to see a few names back in the uh, SOF race. We're missing the egg Ethan Grid Golf again. He's obviously still trying to get his way back from the real Bathurst race and we look forward to him joining us again next week I guess. Yeah and from what I understand the, uh, the majority of the boys who went there you know, from all sorts of uh, the Australian community and I racing uh, had a great time there and uh, there's already plans for a few of the boys to get there next year or uh, even perhaps the Bathurst 12 hour which uh, is certainly not a shabby event at all so looking at the time so far we just down to four minutes there's no change between the top two as we said Aaron Hamilton has moved into third in front of a teammate Marcelo Rivera uh, at the moment 18 times to put in Mick Cracknell in uh, the very distinctive uh, livery tonight we'll talk about that during the race Bocatel hasn't put a time in as yet either he was the uh, very, very convincing winner of the early race, the 6.15 race. He uh, picked that up by about 25, 30 seconds, I think. So he'll come into this race with a bit of confidence. Yeah, that's right. And with only 12 minutes to qualify here and your outlaps, what, you want, it's going to be a good two minutes, 10. Like, you don't get much time. You're under pressure to put a lap in. If you're lucky, you might get three laps. So if you uh, make any mistakes or just get a little off track or something, it doesn't give you much time, so boys under pressure here to get a good qualifying lap in a really short time yeah they are and uh, like you said you know, there's been a lot of laps of Bathurst of late over the last couple of weeks and like I said that will continue on probably for the rest of this week but so yeah the, the boys have had uh, probably an ear and and the girls I think we've got to mention Shakira Dixon's always done pretty well here over the last bit of time um, the boys have had a bit of easier time with setups, I guess, probably haven't had to punch out quite as many laps as usual, but it's um, still great to be here. And uh, yeah, like I said, iRacing with racespot.com is so happy to bring you what is, I believe, the uh, the mainstay of the uh, series. Yeah, that's right. And um, just having a look now, Bo Cattell's just uh, pip Sammy Sutton for the top spot there. 205.41, so very good time there by Bo. 
Yeah, so he's the first to put it into the fours. Like I said, with the uh, temperature, the track temperature is 36 degrees. So certainly uh, not the hottest it's been all week. We've had uh, pretty hot temperatures in the uh, official races so far. So yeah, 36 certainly in the medium size. Hasn't been any cold races, well, from what I know anyway. But that's a pretty good time straight up. Yeah, that's right. And a um, few of the STC boys, we've been struggling this week. Uh, we're getting a lot of understeer in the cars. So... It's going to be interesting to see how they run today. Mick Cracknell's just put a time in up into P7 in his lovely pink scheme, which we will talk about later in the race, that's for sure. And look at that, Ian Ford on the pole. 2 minutes, yeah. 5.24. He loves doing that single lap in the uh, Logitech car tonight. There's a new livery, the Evolution Racing Australia team, Logitech car there. And uh, we'll, again, we'll discuss that at length during the race, no doubt. But... Yeah, good time there by 40, and there's good time still for the boys to recover. Mick Hammond won't be getting another lap in. His qualifying is over. Jake Maloney just exiting the last turn now. Across the strike, see if there's any improver. 205.766. Yes, does go faster. Takes him up in the fourth place, in fact. So times are certainly dropping now. They've got their banker, and James McKnight also improving at 205.833. So definitely times are dropping. Yeah, and Bogatel's just uh, just crossed the start finish line to try and put in one more flying lap. So it'll be interesting to see where what he can do here with uh, pretty much qualifying running out. So this will be the last opportunity. Yeah, it will be Dixon. Actually, Jason Dixon, and again, we'll talk about him during the broadcast. An exciting uh, promotion, uh, care of Sim Spec Engineering with uh, Jason Dixon. Sammy Sutton has kept it in third. He has got this opportunity to punch out a last lap here. So, a bit of excitement to come. We've got Ford, Cattell, Sutton, Maloney, McKnight all on quick laps at the moment. And just trying to see behind when the chequered flag comes out, which is still quite a few cars having the opportunity. Corey Preston's cooked for this qualifying. Aaron Hamilton will get a chance. Burden pits. Oh, Ian Ford looks like he might have a bit of damage to that front right. Yeah, well, once again, we don't have an Australian server, so I think we do see a little bit of damage sometimes when the boys just get close to a wall, which will actually go away. It actually doesn't exist. It's just a bit of a net prediction thing here at iRacing.com. Yeah, it's um, it's something that uh, is starting to uh, be a big discussion point uh, with the Australian iRacing community. Like we said, we've got 23 starters, one's from Europe, so we slide over to an American server, but it's, um, yeah, we're not here to get too stuck into that now, but there has been some abnormalities over the week, and uh, no doubt that discussion will continue on the forums. I'm just on board with Bo Cattell, second place at the moment on the grid. He's just exiting the chase now, that tight little corner there. You, you take it in so many different, well, too many different, second or third, if you want to get that punch out. This has looked like... A fairly decent lap, just having a look as he exits, enters the last corner. Yeah, that's right. He's been pushing it. See if he can improve a little bit Ooh. sideways. A lot of wheel spin on the exit there and no improvement. Still a substantially good lap. Very 4 good. 9 one. Still nothing to be sneezed at. Mario Vlasic and Jason Dixon. No improvement. Improvement for Dixon, however. Gets himself up to 11th. Mick crack now. Crossing the strike now. It's an improvement for him, but not in position. Anthony Mansarello in uh, not many Falcons here oh, tonight. There's a good reason for that. Yeah, a bit slippery. A 7 4 2 2 is an improvement for him. Brenton Hobson just trying to keep a an Marty eye Carroll. See what on Marty, Marty can Carroll. He's currently in position 15 with a 206.8. See what he can do here. And Matthew Barron. I'm just trying to see if Sammy Sutton is still down the road or that's it. I'd say Sammy's probably aborted his last lap. So that would be the end of qualifying. We've got a bit of time to talk about it this uh, time, Sammy. And, uh, and um, yeah, we'll do that. If you could just go through the grid for us, Sam. Yeah, all right. Well, here we go. Ian Ford, P1 again with a great time. Uh, starting next to him will be Bo Cattell, P3, Sammy Sutton, Jake Maloney. Aaron Hamilton in uh, P5, James McKnight, a bit of a Bathurst specialist, P6, and one of James's teammates, Mick Cracknell, in the beautiful pink livery. Uh, position 7, Marcelo Rivera, 
Jake Burton, Corey Preston rounding out the top 10. Yeah, so Strongfield uh, tonight. Um, <laughs> we've got the old sparring partners, Greg Sharp and Mario Vlasic, gritting next to each other in 19th and 20. Look out for the fireworks there. Um, yeah, which is such a quiet, sorry, it's all good. Um, it's just such a uh, close grid at the front, and uh, Ian Ford's such a good qualifier, he does an excellent job, but his race, he's set up such an aggressive setup. Hopefully, his tyres will be able to hang in there tonight, but Bocatel and Sam Sutton, we've seen what they can do at Bathurst over the last couple of days, weeks. Yeah, there's lots of guys in here that are really specialised at Bathurst, and yeah, we should be in for a good, really good race. We're about to grid up, but just want to give a big shout out to, uh, I hope I say this correctly, it's Van, it's Van Balawa. He uh, makes all the camera packs for us here, and he's got a beautiful camera pack for all the viewers today. So here we go, gridding up. Yeah, so it's a, it is a long grid process here, and just on the uh, grid, like I said, that new skin of Ian Ford, that Logitech skin looks absolutely great, but um, got a string of orange cars behind him with the Daco and the SSR cars, it's the Revs build. Green, green, green. And away we go, 33 laps has begun here at Bathurst, it's going to be a long race, an excellent start for Ian Ford, very clean as he gets really clean entry and exit into Hell Corner. That Logitech car's away, the two Daco cars battling in third and fourth. It looks like it's pretty clean back there. I'm looking at Craig Sharp and Mario Vlasic. Those two have kept clean of each other as they head up Mountain Straight. Yeah, it looks like everyone's got a nice clean start. And, um, yeah, it's good. We just got a bit of a Ooh, Corey Preston. Oh, That's Corey safe. Preston. Good That's safe, a great safe. save. That is a great save. Not sure how he did that. So that's a fantastic start, not sure what happened there, we'll have to have a look at that later, but I can tell you it was a really good start. And it looks like a bit of issues at the front is there, not sure. No, it looks like pretty clean. Yeah, Ian's got a pretty good pretty good start here, and so is everyone in the top five actually. So a bit of strategy will be needed tonight though, because uh, they are going to need that pit. It is a full tank, 112 litres they do start with. Probably need to take on board about 35 litres, so as the cars go down the mountain at the moment, just love this site here with the, uh, the new camera angles. Thank you very much for, uh, as we said, uh, who was that that did that? Sorry. Uh, is done below. Sorry. Yeah, so great looking camera angles. Can we apologise, it's fun. I'm sure we got that wrong. But I'm you sure we got that wrong. <laughs> so, but as they go down the main straight, the back draft is such a strong thing here. Ian Ford in the car, number one, wearing the number one plate. We said Ethan Griggolt's not here tonight as they enter the chase. These cars are doing spot on 285, 286, 288. Ford gets to late under brakes here. Just got to be a carrier speed through. Not sure about uh, ping on Ian's car at the moment. Just had a bit of a drop out there. Looks like that's settled down a bit. But uh, yeah, great racing at the moment. It does look clean. So all 23 yeah. cars have got themselves away cleanly. Yeah, that's a real key to having a good race here. Like, uh, these guys have all had a really good start. Cars are clean. So yeah, we're in for a really great race. Nah, well we've got a pit here and it's uh, our usual first lap victim. I didn't get to see it, but I think Greg Sharp has come into the pit. Not sure what's happened there. Looks like on the entrance to the chase. Oh, David Haynes probably taken him for a bit of a ride there. So David Hayne in that uh, Red Bull car is just his exit or his apex at the corner has just punched uh, the uh, Devon of Innovations car well and truly out of this race I would imagine. So an early pit stop for Greg Sharp and uh, yeah, he's not going to be too thrilled. No, not at all. Not Ian Bocatel's uh, put the gap into Ian Ford a little bit, putting Ian under a bit of pressure here. So just watching him come across the top. Yeah, well, Bo's got himself a good setup this week. Like I said, he, he won the 6.15 race by a good 30 seconds. So, yeah, we've really got three really good hot drivers here. And they're in form as well. You've got Ford, you've got Cattell, and you've got Sammy Sutton, Jack Maloney. Uh, it's just dropped back a little bit, but again, he showed some good form. You've got Aaron Hamilton, James McKnight, Mick Crackmill, Marcelo Rivera, Jake Burton, Jason Dixon has done a good job. That would be your top 10. See if 
boat to get a bit of a run down here. He's probably close enough to pick up a bit of a draft. I don't think he'll be and close enough to make a make a move, but he's definitely going to be able to put in under a bit of pressure. It's just and we know that from you know earlier races that Bo is an absolute genius at doing a bit of fuel saving. So, you know, yeah, the expectation is that if Bo can stay close to that Logitech car in front of him, well, you know, there is an expectation that maybe Bo might be able to get out of that pits beforehand if they pit simultaneously. I have no idea what the uh, strategy is tonight. I think car position, or sorry, track position, is such an important thing. And these three guys have really got themselves out in clear air. The catch that Ian Ford's got is if Sammy Sutton pits, do you react to him? Or do you wait and react oh, to... What have we got here? Behind? James McKnight. Oh, pretty yeah. smart driving there. They, it looks like they both went to make a move at the same time. And yeah, well, Aaron Hamilton and James McKnight heading up Mountain Straight. I think that Jake Maloney probably made a bit of a mistake there on the exit of the last turn there. So that really did just close it all up. There were actually three wide for a little bit as it goes. Yeah. Positions in the end haven't changed at all. So really good driving by yeah, all involved driving. there. And I can tell you, you know, from this, uh, Marcelo Rivera and Jake Burton have certainly tagged onto the back of this. And Jason Dixon, Corey Preston... Kurt Stenberg had uh, dramas in yesterday's race and uh, disconnected in Bathurst and still came back for a really good you know, job there a couple of weeks ago. Josh Bird and Brenton Hobson, Marty Carroll, the old fellas doing right. Mick Hammond has showed some pace with his teammate Jason Bentz this week, who's still putting around there. He's in 20th position, but yeah, they're pretty much all still nose to tail. No one's certainly dropped off the back as yet. No, and this is what we're talking about. Obviously, it's way too early to even consider pit stopping. You won't get enough fuel in. But like you said, if if, if the pit window does open and there's, you, you feel you're getting held up, like the best option will be to duck in the pits, get into some clean air, and try and put a few good laps in when you've got uh, no one in front of you. Yeah, well, that's right. Boca Tell with an excellent run now down Conrad Strait as they enter the chase. So, a bit of pressure here. He's going to back out of this, but whether he follows through Ooh. on it as they... Ooh! He's the car gets light there. So, Bo Ooh. just taking that bit of curb there. That's, yeah, he's kept it together. It's great driving, but there's certainly a lot of pressure on that Logitech car at the moment of Ian Ford. Bo Cattell and Sammy Sutton certainly playing a waiting patient game, which is fantastic. See, we don't want to see any of these boys punted into all. But as they cross the strike at the end of lap three, you can certainly tell... Yeah, Bo Cattell's... Gonna all make a move him. here. All over yeah. him like a fat kid on a on a cupcake. Look at here he is up the inside. Yeah, you'd say he's gonna get a good drive out of there for just that little bit wide, but if he can hold this ground, have a look at Sammy Sutton. Yeah. He's gonna be digging his heels in here. He can see an opening. So he's gonna swap over to whichever car suits him best with the draft. They're gonna be really deep here in the Griffins. So turn two. Outside oh. line, there's not gonna be too many marbles yet if oh he's oh. Touch, has he touched the wall? No, I think he's got through. Not clean. sure he did. Lucky Fantastic. there's no marbles yet. Yeah, well, that's that, there's nothing untoward there. No. Both the guys held their line, just hoping now. You don't want to be Sutton too is, wide and grip really. No, you don't want to be too wide. Um, hoping now that there's no contact as this race goes on. Sammy Sutton's now behind Ian Ford. There was actually a bit of drama at Mid Ohio, which we actually thought originally that um, Ford went off and lost the lead there, but. Upon looking at the replay, Sammy Sutton, and he said himself he made a mistake and apologised for it, but yeah, Sammy did actually punt 40 off in that race, and uh, that was a race that Ethan Greg Galt, not here tonight, went on to win, but yeah, Ford not struggling for pace, let's face it, he is in the lead, but I think the two guys behind at the moment have got him covered for pace. Yeah, definitely. I just had, I just glanced and had a little bit of a look at the replay, even though it's showing Bo with a little bit of damage, I don't think he actually hit that wall, so that's yeah, well on my screen it's got Ford car completely missing the front, so it's uh, yeah, so a little bit of a glitch there, and uh, hopefully as time goes on that will get better. Oh, we got Jack fantastic. The inside of Hamilton. Oh, he's there. Oh, there's he's contact. Oh, he's oh, oh, that's not going to end well. Oh, Hamilton. See if Let's see if they can hold oh, this. He has. That has McKnight. You are joking. Good job. That's to insane. Both. And here we go. They're still oh. rubbing feathers. Right now, I think Aaron's going to need to calm down a little bit. And there's Marcelo Rivera about to start thinking, that I'm having a piece of this. I cannot believe that they both held out. They were cracking 280 
there. So Aaron's suggesting it's a net code. Don't know. Didn't I think see we need a all replay. of it. Let's go back and but have a look at that for the viewers here. What a save! They've come down the straight. Then James McKnight has made the move up the inside, and he just came over a little bit. And yeah. Oh, I can't believe Aaron saved that. I can't believe they both saved that. Really. Well, is it a net code call? As you see it, Sammy. But um, uh, I don't think it. it, is, it, it yeah, it looked I like there was a bit of James a. Come over. That's on so my screen anyway. Yeah, it just looked like James has probably come over a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it's just locked them in together and they couldn't get out of it. Yeah, yeah, that's how I see it too. But I was, as an SDC boy, I thought that you call that. No, mate, but the I'm best commentating, thing is, I'll call it how I see it. The best thing is that both guys have actually survived and they still live to fight another day. Sure, they dropped a bit of time, a 209 a last lap for, for Aaron, a 207, 9 for um, James McKnight. So that's certainly not shabby. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they both they got pretty lucky there, actually. Oh, yeah, no, it was lucky. There's no doubt it was a bit of luck, but tell me there's not a bit of quick reflexes and oh, skill involved in yeah, bringing those to that. I'm taking that away. I'm not taking that away from you at all. Just catch my breath here and try and find another battle for you. Well, there's full of battles at Marcelo Rivera's right with Mick Cracknell, but Aaron Hamilton's now in the tow of James McKnight, so this could be round two action here between the two. Aaron's car doesn't look like it's got any damage at all, whereas uh, I certainly, well, no, Aaron's damage is to the back and uh, and James is to the front, so that might tell a story just there. Yeah, I think we keep an eye on this battle, actually, like you said. Hamilton's uh, caught back up to Nugsy here and we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, they are uh, what have we got, 28 laps to go. I can't see these boys duking it out for 28. No, he's starting to uh, run a bit faster. Getting in his mirrors. So this is going to be an important part here, is that exit hell corner. McKnight with so much wheel spin on that exit, so that's going to set Aaron up. Although he's still got a bad drive out after that, so I'm maybe thinking that his mid-corner speed was pretty good as well. I don't think Aaron's going to have a look here as they enter turn two at Griffins. Just love this part of the track. Just such a technical part here. And the guys could take it, yes. I know some guys take it in second gear to get that early turn in. Yeah, and, I think uh, the majority would be in third, but. Yeah, the well, majority are in third for sure. So just seeing if there was a bit of drama behind. Yeah, there is the Mansarella car. Is no, he's actually redressing. So I would say that himself and Jason Bentz have had an issue. Yeah, and, back in turn uh, one, mate. That uh, hell yep. corner. Yep. So well, you know, mistake that it happened, but certainly good sportsmanship there by the Maverick Welding Car of Mansarello that he's actually readdressed that position. So you know, main strength of field race here on a Monday night telecast by Racebot TV, and uh, <laughs> you know, great, great sideways through the dipper. Yeah, this battle has finished run. here. And really, it's an SDC ERA, SDC ERA and Deco car there all lined up. So they're running two by two there at the moment. A bit of Noah's Ark stuff. Yeah, we've kind of lost what's happening up the front. Ian Ford's just a little update. Ian's still out in front. He's got nearly a second gap to Sammy Sutton. And here comes Hamilton. Oh. Clean move. Looks Let's like see. McKnight might have been down on a bit of speed there, hey? Yeah, but McKnight was driving angry before we heard his comments. We were able to hear his comments over the radio. He uh, wasn't impressed with Aaron. And uh, I don't think McKnight's thoughts are in agreement with ours here in the commentary booth. No doubt he'll have a, a look and maybe a reflect on that later on. But, yep, yeah, a good clean move there by Aaron Hamilton. Probably has got that straight line speed. There's no front end damage. The rear end damage there doesn't affect the straight line speed quite as much. But... By saying that, uh, we've got Jason Dixon's actually dropped off a little bit. He's now behind Corey Preston, so thinking that Jason must have made a mistake somewhere. And talking about Jason Dixon, I reckon you've got some pretty exciting news there on behalf of Simspec Engineering there. Yeah, well, like we've been talking about in the weeks before this race, uh, Jason Dixon and Simspec Engineering are going to be giving our viewers a chance to win a beautiful button box. And... Uh, 
what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find Simspec Engineering on Facebook. You're going to have to like the page and just make a little comment of the code word. And uh, the code work word is Simspec Eng. I'm going to type it up in the chat. And all you got to do is uh, comment that on the Facebook page. And next week, just before the start of the race, Jason will uh, draw the name and we're going to give that button box away next week. So, good chance for our viewers to get in on the action and get a nice prize from Simspec Engineering. Yeah, fantastic. Jason Dixon there. And uh, look out for that code word. Sam is about to type that up now in our chat. So, get on board there with that great chance to win. Such a prize back up the front, Ian Ford in that Logitech, that's a beautiful livery, that Logitech car, um, Jake Black, or Night Rider Designs, uh, has uh, put that car out this week. It's really just a thank you to the Logitech brand itself, they've been so supportive of iRacing and the Australian community, and you know, I'm thinking to myself that the G27 is probably the most popular wheel used uh, in the iRacing community, they make a great product there, and uh, I'm sure that a lot of the people will agree that, you know, especially for its prices, I think the best bang for your buck is that G27, G29 has been released. So, really, it's just a great thanks to those at Logitech for what they do, and there's going to be uh, plenty of uh, Logitech sponsorship hopefully coming up in uh, iRacing. Yeah, well, mate, I've actually got one step down. I've got the Logitech Driving Force GT, and I've had it now for about six years, and I just wish it would die, so I had an excuse to buy a new one, but it's still going as strong as the day I bought it, so I love it. And uh, Jake Burton, in the meantime, sorry, in that Daco car, has uh, absolutely binned it as well, but he's actually able to continue on. We're just going to have a look at the replay of that. looks yeah. like, uh, yeah, the last turn there. He's just clipped the curb a little bit, eh? Yeah, oh, so just that, oh, no, he isn't. No, no, he isn't. I don't know what he's done there. That's at Murray's Corner. So, Jake has... Oh, there it is on uh, yeah, yeah, he's Murray's done a, Corner. Huge incident. What has he done there? He's done a he big dive in. on he's, Marcelo Rivera. He's missed and, his braking marker there and just yeah, totally wiped out Marcelo. no way. And he's come out right in front of Brenton Hobson there. And I'm thinking that Hobson might be carrying a bit of damage as well there now in the uh, what's the, in the four motorsports cars so that was at Murray's that's um yeah a little bit of damage there but I'm um, certainly uh, incredibly late braking there like you said I think he's just missed his brake marker but yeah looking to see how much that has affected Marcelo Rivera's car and Marcelo's now got Corey Preston behind him so this is going to get a little bit hot as well and Marcelo I'm thinking is carrying a bit of damage yeah, it certainly is from that. Yeah, his steering is going to be kaput. So I think uh, that uh, I think Jake's really ended his day there. Oh, so what, I don't know what's happened there? But I think Anthony, sorry, Marcelo's car is really struggling for steering there. I wouldn't be surprised if Marcelo's going to have to pit this because that doesn't look good at all. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm really hoping he doesn't take out um, Corey with him. No, and uh, pretty much what... It, this, I'm just going to take a wild shot in the dark, but you saw Marcelo, he had a bit of drama just coming into Murray's corner, and that probably distracted Jake, and Jake just missed his braking marker totally. Well, let's move back up the field now. What have we got? Jason Dixon up there in quite a battle. We are just talking about Jason. Jason Dixon, Marty Carroll. Who else we got in there? Corey Preston, is it? Josh yeah. yeah, so Preston in that six booster Falcon there, the, uh, the uh, I can't remember the name of his team off the top of my head right now, but um, he's got that little bit of damage from that awesome save right about there um, when he on lap one got it actually on the grass and just brought it back magnificently. He should be wrapped with the fact that he's still in the race. Jason Dixon's pace has been off today, but I think uh, he's probably hasn't had much track time this week, and uh, as you said, the STC boys. I tend to be struggling this week uh, here at Bathurst, which is surprising. But uh, Burden is sitting patient behind, and the old fella Marty Carroll, he's done a pretty good job here as well, 12th position at the moment. I think the STC boys have all been on the Terps a bit too much watching the Bathurst 1000 this week, mate. And lots of uh, fantastic sporting events going on around the world this week, so I think they need to uh, focus again on their on their sim racing. 
And let's not forget that if you click on the uh, little icon there, the timing and the storing is available of this race uh, on timing.racebot.tv. Timing.racebot.tv. That'll give you all the timing and the scoring from not just this race, but also all the other races. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, Ian Ford was out to a second lead. Sammy Sutton's closed that up by a couple of tenths now. Just a little update for everyone what's happening up the front. But meanwhile, we've got Jason Dixon uh, all over the back of Corey. It's looking like he's got a bit more speed. He might actually have a little look here. No. Oh, that was tight. Well, Ford's done a really good job controlling this race so far. And... Uh but the, the, these two boys, um, Sammy Sutton and Bo Cattell, they certainly haven't gone away. The important thing is here now at lap 10, that pit window oh, Corey, is... Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Go. Yeah, Corey made a big mistake there, and um, he's recovered quite well. Who's this? Ooh, oh, the old Marty. fella, Marty. Trying to oh. snap a bit of pension and discount there on the inside. Yeah, king of the mountain about 40 years ago, I believe, as well. So he'll be looking for a good finish. Yeah, well, he, he loves this track. He's always going well. He's probably, I would say, his favourite track. Here comes Dixon. The strongest track. But Dixon, yeah, with a really good run here, and surely that's going to get done here. Yeah, Corey goes a little bit wide there just to give him room. And, yeah, Jason Dixon gets the, gets the oh, job done. Oh, behind him. Oh, there's been a behind big Behind him, there's an accident again. Oh, and Who's Corey's that? in the wall, too. So, Brenton Hobson and Mick Hammond have had some drama going up to Corey. Now, Corey's all right on my screen, but um, but uh, Hobson and Hammond, I'm pretty sure, have had a get-together there at turn two. Or has Mick just lost it? No, Mick's just lost it himself, actually. He's flying so so apologies to Brenton Hobson there. No, uh, no fault of his at all. But Mario Vlasic, at the moment, is probably one of the cleanest cars out there. Don't jinx him. Oh, this battle, it's just great watching the cars coming down there through, uh, what is it, the cutting and the dipper and down through Skyline. It's just amazing to watch, especially when they're nose to tail. It's a real credit to iRacing, a uh, fantastic job they do. Everyone has a little whinge at little things here and there, but, mate, there's nowhere else that you can get racing like this online week in and week out, and uh, it's just a real credit to the work they do. Yeah, and with um, two sex, and with the uh, iRacing Road Warrior Bathurst 1000 coming up this sun Saturday, sorry, look, it's not at an Australian-friendly time. We all know that. I think there is a bit of more noise and certainly a bit of movement into possibly getting another Bathurst 1000 set. I'm thinking for about maybe one, two o'clock Eastern Standard Time on the Sunday. So keep your eyes open for that on the uh, iRacing.com forums. But certainly, uh, at the moment, it seems like uh, one Bathurst 1000 is locked in for, unfortunately, it's, it starts at midnight. Oh, Marty, again. This is action back here. Sorry, mate. Corey Preston, Marty Carroll. Who's that burden has got through? Yeah, well, you put Corey Preston in the car and you put him at Bathurst, there's always going to be a bit of action around him. Talking about a bit of action, we've got Jake Burton in the commentary box with us. Jake, we're going to grab you for a couple of minutes, mate, if that's all right. Not the result you're hoping for tonight. Uh, yeah, bit of a bit of an issue there, mate. Tell us about the accident. Uh, I don't really know, Brenton. We're, we're coming into the chase, and um, Marcelo just seemed to get on the brakes really early, and I accidentally tapped him, and, you know, of course, uh, that sort of stuff can happen. But uh, then he just drove straight across the chase, pulled probably six or seven lengths on me, and then I thought, oh, yeah, he'd have a slowdown, and... Uh, I'll just pass him back on the straight when he tries to clear it, but uh, we, we come into the last corner and he basically stops on the apex and I try to get down the inside and obviously there's a little bit of contact that took place, so I turned us both around, but um, yeah, the car wasn't too bad, I was hoping on getting back out there, but then uh, yeah, I was in pit lane and Marcelo went and ran straight into me and disqualified me, so uh, yeah, that was a bit disappointing, but uh, other than that, it was a fairly fun race. A lot of battle packs and whatnot going on out there. It made it fairly interesting. Have to say though um, that the uh, and I have been taking notice, and even yours just then, the ping is through the roof. The qual is way, way down. It just seems to be swapping around tonight. There's been a couple of netcode incidents. I'm not saying that's what happened in your case, but there's certainly been a lot of incidents out there. All these cars look damaged. I'm not sure there is as much damage, but. Mate, this weekend the uh, iRacing Road Warrior Bathurst 1000, you're off to that, doing that, are you? 
Oh, yeah, the ping's interesting. I don't really know why all the Euros are getting builds, but we're not for some reason. But, uh, yeah, as for Road Warrior next weekend, um, I'm hoping on having a go. Unfortunately, I had some real-life racing on, so couldn't make the Scops 1000, but uh, we were lucky enough to win that one, so great job to Sam and Jake. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully be taking them out next weekend with... Uh, my mate Stenny, so it should be a uh, fairly good weekend. Hopefully we can uh, produce a result similar to that that Sam and Jake did. In the meantime, Sammy Sutton has just had a pit stop, so he's exiting the pits there just behind Mario Blasic. So Sam's got some new tyres on here. I'm sure he wouldn't have wanted to come out behind any traffic. Mario is hard to pass at the best of times, we know. So Sam's going to have to make the most of his tyres here. And, uh, oh, gee, Mario, not real great there under brakes in the Griffins. be interested to see what kind of lap Sammy Sutton can get here. This is a really important outlap right now. We need to know whether the two cars of Ford and Cattell are gonna to have to react to this, but Sam Sutton's gonna be stuck on thinking behind Vlasic here, or is Mario gonna let him go? This is a really interesting part of the race here for Sammy, and this is a really defining part of the race right now. Yeah, so as they go it's up, really hard place yeah. to get by someone too, isn't it? Yeah, well, there's no blue flags here, so Mario doesn't need to let him through as they enter exit Reed Park as they come into McMillamy, such a famous part of the track here, reaching fifth gear. And again, Sam's going to be really oh, keen. Here he's tagged. Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's he going to have a slow down to start with. Absolutely tagged Mario Vlasic there. That is not Mario's fault. Be interested to see if Sam's going to redress that. Well, to be Think honest, it, it kind of looked like uh, Vlasic might have been trying to let him go. Sammy oh, wasn't quite ready you know, for it. You don't let him go there, and Sam is just readdressing his slowdown, I think, as he's now on to Conrad. He's picked up speed again. Mick Hammond is now in his draft. Mick hasn't had a pit stop yet, but <clears throat> that's the penalty you pay if you come out. You make that early stop. You know, if, if, if he probably just had to wait that extra lap, and he would have cleared Vlasic on the exit of the pit lane, but he, he pitted there, so maybe his spotters weren't able to uh, give him the right information, or... Vlasic was a bit quicker than what was realised, but that has certainly hurt Sam Sutton, but I can tell you who else has hurt. It's killed <laughs> off Mario Vlasic. Yeah, I shouldn't have jinxed him about having a clean car, and we see Mario is going to head into the pits now and try and get what he can get fixed, I guess. As, as you say, tell, exits, Hang on two secs. As Bocatel exits the pits as well now, so Bo's in the same position here. He's well clear. Look at the difference there between Cattell and Sutton. That's how much ground Sammy Sutton lost, not just through the drive-through, but also being held up over the top there. And look at this battle here we've got in front of him. We've got good old Corey Preston, Josh yep. Bird, and Marty Carroll. Now, if these guys want to continue on their battle, I'm thinking strategically one of them will probably pit soon, but Marty tends to stay out a bit longer than the other guys, so Marty's going to have possibly, probably, Bo Cattell on him shortly. And again, there's not going to be any blue flags. Sorry to cut you off there, Josh. will get to you in a second but it's a fantastic race but right now what we need to have what we need to have a look at is um ian ford in that logitech card let's just see if he reacts i'm thinking if he's got his spotters working properly he won't react to it he'll keep on it right now try and keep out we're on lap 13 here so we've still got the 20 and a half laps to go if 40 pits now we know where he's going to come out he's going to come out behind preston and and uh, carol so he's not going to want to pit now, I wouldn't think. But by saying that, as he exits the chase, we'll shortly see what he's going to do. Yeah, we're looking at his lap times. You know, he's still running mid 206s, low 206s. It's not like he's fallen off. And he's going to carry on and keep on trucking. Yeah, and rightly so too, because, um, yeah, like we said, you know, he's going to come out in traffic. So I'd be keeping going, that's for sure. And here we go. Uh, Corey Preston, Bocatel, too wide. Ooh, oh, this, oh, this is oh. As Jake Malone, oh, as Jake no. Maloney oh. and how Hamilton people we'll jump on board that. We, that's oh, going to be worth a replay. <laughs> that's, is, so who's that? Josh Burden is pitting and so is Corey. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, Bocatel's had a big run and locked up the brakes coming down there into... Oh, where, oh big moment. No, Run what's happened the there? So they're real keen, these guys, and you can't blame them. There's a race to be won here, and this is the time to be putting it down. But what's happened there is that Bo and Corey have just nudged each other. I think, actually, if anything, I think Bo's driven into the side of Corey. Just made that car that little bit light, outbalanced, and uh, that's really messed up his car under braking. That's why he's just that little bit deeper, and now he's starting to carry 
quite a bit of damage there. His last lap of 237, that's including that pit lap. That's a very, very good pit lap and out lap, mind you. I know he had a bit of damage there, but a 237, that's in comparisons. And we've got to look at Sam Sutton's knowing that he had a slowdown and was held up by Mario Blasic on a 242. So that's that five second difference right there. And if you look on the track, that's about where they are, about five seconds different. Yeah, and actually the old fella Marty did just come in for a pit stop, so he's out on the track with uh, four fresh tyres and full of full of fuel for the end. So we've got a good battle, Jake Maloney, Aaron Hamilton and James McKnight. Once again, everyone's completed their pit stops. So it's just, this, is, uh, this is up the front, actually. Yeah, sorry, mate. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Jake, we'll get back to you, mate, now, just before you go, mate. Um yeah, big things hopefully this weekend for you and uh, after the team's success a couple of weeks ago and uh, an awesome performance there and where's the team looking at going from here? Uh, I don't know, of course we've got two rounds of the Scops left so that's our priority, I uh, just want to consolidate some good results but uh, yeah the official series is looking really good, uh, this week we were really impressed, like we tried dumping several cars in here this week, like we got Matty Barron and myself, uh, like obviously both had bad races and then of course, you got Sam, uh, Stenny, and Jake up there, and we're really starting to enjoy this. Like, this is fantastic competition, like especially here at Bathurst. And uh, we actually have car number one in second split is our new signing, Matty Ross Monroe. So, uh, yeah, we had That's six strong. Daco cars racing tonight. So, uh, basically, just trying to race the V8 as much as we can. And uh, of course, you got a couple months off the Scops coming up soon, so we'll be sure to jump in the official series uh, during the break. That's fantastic news, the Logitech car, car number one, Ian Ford in the pits, be watching this. He's going to take on a bit more fuel than, Bo, fuel than Bo Cattell. I know Bo had that interest there, not sure if Bo's had some dramas, however. Yeah, Bo's spun. Uh, has he? Well, he's on Bo the exit has, now of Murray's. I think Bo, he oh, yeah, he has. Yeah, Bo has. A bit delayed, sorry. Yeah, Bo's well, that's let Sammy it. Sutton through. Yeah, so you'd almost say lights out for Bo Cattell. This race is such a shame, like I said, the 6.15 race did an outstanding job and uh, well, we saw the dramas that um, relayed some other cars in the uh, Bathurst 1000, so uh, you know, I think Bo, I'm not sure, did he have a good result? can't remember the top of my head, she, uh, no, I can't remember, too, too long ago for my old brain, but uh, there's other battles happening here, but we're just having a look where Ian Ford is, he's had that uh, pit stop already and he has really driven away so fantastic effort here so far by the logitech car mate going back to uh jake burton jake fantastic that uh, you guys have made that commitment i'll tell you what else is fantastic that signing of matty ross munro he is really really highly regarded in the iRacing australian community and having him on board mate is a fantastic signing it really is generally well done and uh, that's just going to make your really good team even stronger so that's fantastic Oh mate, yeah, like we uh, put, it was only a couple of days before pre-qualifying started I found out I couldn't race so we, we put Matty in uh, just like that and you know we offered him a permanent seat pretty much straight away just because it was very impressive what he was doing, just his performance was awesome and he fits in really well with our team but I just thought something that might uh, interest you guys, I just saw Ian Ford completely clutch down coming into the chase. Ooh. Might be okay. saving fuel there. Yeah, well, he, he might has... be. He has some, um, it was an exceptionally quick pit stop, we have to know, and uh, if he's doing that, what we'll do, we'll actually jump on board there. Yes, he's backing out of it already. Wow, that's not what Ian Ford should be doing. He's well, not the leader of the race. Kurt Stenberg's actually the uh, virtual leader of the race at the moment. So Stenny's last to have pitted, actually Mick Cracknell should be up in the distance too, from what I my timing's I've telling got, me. No, Cracknell's in the pits. Oh, yep, Mick Cracknell pitting in in his beautiful pink livery. Oh, actually, it doesn't look like it's showing up on the broadcast. Uh, that's a shame. Well, trust me, it's Pit. So, Mick will uh, Jake be happy. Green, thanks for uh, jumping in, mate, and telling us about the news on your team, mate. Looking forward to seeing some great things as you guys progress here in the official iRacing broadcast, which is brought to you by Racebot TV and iRacing.com. Jake, thanks for your time. No worries, guys. Great work, and uh, thank you very much. Cheers, Jake. Jake uh, Burton there. Not uh, too lucky tonight, but uh, a good effort for his team. And I'm just going to, uh, we'll, we'll do the next lap. Ooh, yeah, there is no doubt that Ian Ford is uh, struggling. He is really struggling. 
So we're going to do the next lap with Ian Ford and uh, we'll get on board with him. I'm not going to do it this lap, but uh, I just had a bit of a look and there's no way that that car is doing what it should do. And Sammy Sutton is making some decent gains on him. Well, it's going to be interesting to find out what's actually happened here. If he has realised he hasn't put enough fuel in, now is the time to start saving it. You know, yeah, get it, it done early, get it saved so you can carry on. But and just behind too, before we go on board with the Ford, you've got a great battle with McKnight, Cattell and Jake Maloney sitting in the wings there as well. So something brewing there. But my big interest right now is with Ian Ford as he exits the chase here. Here go our director if we could. We'll just spend the next lap on board this magnificent looking Logitech car, this Holden Commodore, the car number one. And we'll see uh, and we'll listen out for uh, if he's lifting at all. So as he exit Murray's corner, so he's just starting lap 17 here. His last lap at 2.070 on new tyres. And he is getting out of that a smidge early, no doubt. So hell corner, second gear, punching up through the gears here, third. Just having a look at that gap behind, a 5.228 Sammy Sutton has actually taken eight tenths of a second out of Ian that last lap. Wouldn't mind jumping over to the uh, TS channel to see where Ian's at here because that looks like he's traveling really light. So Griffin's been turned two. Just touching fourth gear here, breaking down to second, try and hold a nice light tight line here at the cutting. A little bump here, this is where you want to change the third just on that bump. Ford looking like he's, it almost looks slow. Call this little party at Greg Murphy corner. We know it's not. As we come out here into a reed park, this is where uh, the Dick Johnson Falcon binned it yesterday and then McPhillamy Park fourth, normally fifth gear, so things looking different for Ford as he enters, oh wow, so the skyline through the S's here, into the dip of second gear, just punching out here, short shift to third, this doesn't look like a real quick lap as he comes into the famous Forest Elbow. This is the most important part of Connor. You've got to rely on yourself on getting a good drive out of here. I don't think he did. So onto the famous Conrod Strait. Remember years ago, there was no such thing as a chase. It used to just be flat chat. That was changed when the uh, World Touring Car Championship guys came out here back in the late 80s and uh, the Europeans decided that, hey, I know, that's too dangerous. Let's put something in here. And I think actually it's a magnificent addition. So 40 is definitely backing out. He's yep. been touching 288. He's on 270 at the moment. So I'll tell you right now, if I was Sammy Sutton behind him, I'd be getting awfully excited about the speed of Ian 40. And it's over the, uh, under the Armoral Bridge into the last turn, Murray's Corner. The thing is here, with second gear, the thing is here is what is his time? It doesn't look fast. Well, no, it's not. It well, was a 6.6. Six. <laughs> yeah. You but know what he's they say? Half a second. He's That's dropped half a say. second. And his lap before was a 207 flat, so. Uh... Yeah. I'm sure that he's actually. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that he's actually fuel saving. He's lifting yeah, before he's, the braking zones. He is definitely lifting early. That is 100%. He is saving fuel. But we don't know how much he has to save, but he's pretty smart if he's just trying to get it done now. Because uh, you don't want to be doing it with uh, one and a half laps to go, I'll tell you now. Yeah, well, like I said, though, a 2066 is certainly nothing shabby, but there's a 2061 behind him, and right. uh, that gap now is down to 2.5 seconds. It used to be 5.2 seconds, so massive, massive games here by Sam Sutton. Not sure how much Ford has to save. I'll tell you a little bit of a shout out here is to Aaron Hamilton in that Maverick World in Commodore. He's got himself up into third place still. He's got Bo Cattell right behind him here, so it's a bit of a race on here. We saw a bit of a damage to Aaron's car, certainly a lot of damage to Bo's car, and behind them, James McKnight and Jake Maloney. Yeah, well, you know, Sammy's he's pulled in nearly one and a half seconds in the last two laps over in Ford, so he's uh, Sammy's going to be seeing that, and he's going to be he's going to realise that he's faster, and now is the time to push if he thinks. If he thinks that Ian's saving fuel in front and he's got enough fuel, now is the time to push. Well, someone who might know whether Ian's struggling for fuel, we've got him now. The uh, Marcelo Rivera didn't get the result he wanted tonight. Marcelo, car number 10 tonight, Maverick Welding, ERA Commodore. Welcome to the broadcast. The question straight to you is Ian Ford saving? Ah, uh, yes he is, gentlemen. <laughs> how, how much, much is, he, is he saving? Uh, 
I'm not exactly sure. I just had to do some calculations for him, but he's definitely uh, saving a bit of fuel. So, that, well, that's the thing here. Look, his last lap at 2066, but we can see he's visibly struggling here. Let's just see near his lap time. Yeah, seven flat, kind of six one, sorry, six seven. So another three tenths. So, well, tension rising here for the, uh, the uh, car, the Logitech car now. He's certainly got the uh, Daco car, Sammy Sutton, certainly got the red mist out here. He can see that Logitech car getting bigger and bigger in his windscreen. Over to you though, Marcelo, your race tonight. Looked like a bit of a sideshow, mate. There's a few incidents there without uh, pointing too many fingers, mate. What happened in the race? Yeah, no, it was a, a night nice start. It was, I was actually really enjoying it. Unfortunately, yeah, came into contact a couple of times. Uh, I think down just after the chase, Jake bumped me off and I had to go shooting off cut the track and then I think he assumed that I, must, I had a slowdown but my slowdown actually disappeared before the last corner so I was just ready to take my normal line but I think he might have assumed that I was going to let him take, down, take me down the inside and in the end we just collided and really ended up wrecking our races but hey, you can't win them all eh? No mate, you can't. It's been a, uh, a big week for you and the team in the uh, Blanc Pain Endurance Series there. Yeah, strong enough result to get you in the top 50 I think at the moment so really the attention of yourself and the team's probably gone away from the V8s for a short time to that long pain series but meanwhile at the front your teammate Ian Ford oh, look mate I've got to admit I'm going to send you away with an early mark this week because I want you to come back and I want you to tell us how much Ian Ford is short for the broadcast can you do yep. that for us? Go and do your mate, homework Marcelo Go, go, go and do details. some homework Talk to him when he's we'll on do. Conrad though mate get into his head and just see how far short he is and make sure he ain't lying to you uh, yeah. While well, Marcelo does that, Hugo, we might just have Jake Maloney here and uh, James McKnight. It's a good battle starting to build for position five and six. Yeah, it is a good battle, but just in front of them is Aaron Hamilton and Bo Cattell. Bo is going to have a look at Aaron here in the chase. I don't think Bo's got the straight line speed anymore. Like That car seriously looks like well, a half eaten pass. Looks, yeah, like, it looks a, like a modified. It should be racing at Bristol or something. Yeah, certainly won't have engine temperature problems today. And like I said, uh, it's got a face like a smashed crab, that one tonight. But by saying that, it is still circling out there. It is still in fourth place, and he's just thrown in a lap of a 206.5, no, a 207.1. So looking aboard on Ian Ford, a 206.2 now. And uh, he's taken out three-tenths of a second, so maybe Ian's done what he needs to do with that fuel saving. Certainly maybe some anxious moments there. We're not saying it's gone away, but... Maybe just trying to keep uh, Sam out of that draft and Sam a lot of uh, wheel spin there on the exit at turn two Griffin. So Ford's got the newer tyres by about four laps I'm thinking it is. He pitted lap 15, Sammy Sutton behind lap 12. So yeah, just a bit of a difference in tyre wear there. And going back to the battle of P5 as well, this is starting to heat up even more. Well, it looks like uh, Jake's gotten through. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good recovery here by Jake. He, he did a good job. Uh, race. Yes, I did. Did McDonough just tag that wall there? I reckon he might have just taken a piece of it. Yeah, I think he's had a bit of damage ever since that early incident. Going down Conrod straight into the chase where they had a huge moment, and uh, I think he's been carrying a little bit of damage ever since then. And another good battle here for 12th and 13th as well with Burden and Preston. Preston. Just, he, he's driven a inch, a more, an eventful race, but I don't think any of it's been his fault, I'll be honest with you. I think he's done a pretty good job. He just seems to be caught up he's in everybody else's incidents at the moment, but he's certainly uh, had his share of dramas tonight. 13th position at the moment, that six boost Falcon. And uh, what are we, lap 20 now, so still the uh, 14 laps to go. Still a lot of time to pass other cars, but also still a lot of time to make mistakes as Mick Hammond behind them has just gone straight across the uh, exit at Skyline there, so he'll get a shortcut as well. So yeah, well, just having a look. Like you said about Corey, he's been involved, he's been, hasn't had much time to breathe this race. He had that fantastic save on lap one coming into Griffin's Bend and yeah I think that kind of set the precedence for the rest of his race but like you said he's done a good job. And I can tell you there's some bad news for you mate that Marty Carroll is also in the pits his day looks done he's been there yeah he's been there for quite a long while and let's not forget that he already pitted on lap 14 so back in the pits now 
on uh, lap 20 so uh, issues for him that will be his day done he's gone a lap down so you won't be recovering from that no that's a shame for the king of the mountain from 1963 unfortunately <laughs> so he won it as a 30 year old that's good to see yep Ooh, Sammy Sutton on the exit there's just that little hump there where you change third gear on the exit of the cutting there got the car really sideways losing a lot of traction there a 206.6 for Sam, a 206.2 for the Logitech car in front, 2.8 seconds ahead. Certainly not game, set, match by any means. There's still a long way to go. No, and um, what do you reckon? Ford, he might have saved what he had to save. He's back now running low 206s. So, but, uh, well, we haven't heard from our spy, Marcelo Rivera, yet. He might be just punching out a heap of those. Yeah. As I used to say in sport, always take away hope. So if you can take away hope and... Make the other guy just think to himself, yeah, well, maybe he's got me covered. Well, maybe Forty's just doing that and might need to save later on. Maybe not so much motor racing, certainly did a lot of yachting in my day to take away hope and just keep covering him. But back in the battle for, probably not many people here sailing, uh, the battle for P3 at the v -top, Maverick World in Commodore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get a compass, mate, you'll find yourself. And Bo Cattell, the SSR car, these guys have been battling. Bo's lacking straight line speed. It'll be interesting if Bo actually does get to make a move on uh, Aaron, whether he can actually keep that. And he's going to have a good look here in the chase. He's certainly Ooh. got his nose in there. Yeah, but if Aaron's smart, he's going to sit off this because Definitely. I reckon Aaron's faster in a straight line. But what he's going to do possibly is bring that Daco car, the car nine of Jake Maloney, right back into this. But let's just see where uh, Bo Cattell and Aaron Hamilton sit here. I do, like I said, Bo is sitting very comfortably in Aaron's draft. He's the one punching the hole in the air. Let's see how he goes this time. Yeah, well, this is where the battle is definitely heating up in this race right now. And like you said, let's just see how his uh, straight line speed is. Yeah, it's not there at the moment, certainly, Bo. Probably got that better drive out of... Uh have uh, out of um, hell cornered there but I don't think Aaron's going to be going anywhere Bo Cattell we know pitted on lap 13 Aaron Hamilton has got that one lap newer tyres I'd be really surprised with the um, where's uh, Jason this year I'd be surprised if his drop off tonight oh, he, he'd been showing some good pace earlier in the week but uh, I think uh, as other teams have stuck some laps in and updated their Original Bathurst Ooh. setup. That was close, my boy. Sorry to interrupt, mate. I thought he was. Uh, no, nah, it's all good. Yeah. That's a big I'll tell you what else has happened up the front. Sam Sutton's last lap was 7 2. So Ford has taken out half a second that last lap. So that lead now is out to 3.3. So I think it may be 40. Uh, and I notice it's Marcelo back with us yet. No, he's not. So maybe. <laughs> On that ERA uh, TeamSpeak Channel 40 just said, I ain't telling you diddly. Nothing. <laughs> and a lot of piece of me can probably agree with that, but my commentator's head on, we'd love to know. So I'm just going to keep watching the lap time here of Ford and Sutton for this extra lap. Both have uh, gone out from the chase, Ford's past the uh, pit entry here into the last turn at Murray's Corner. What a magnificent track. It really is just an awesome track. A 6 3 for Ford that lap. In comparison yeah. with a seven flat. And Bo Cattell just kind of, uh, he's just not showing any uh, signs of loss of straight line speed or anything. He's just uh, pulled away from Aaron Hamilton there. So it looks like it, not having a bonnet and not having the best, the straightest car is not really a disadvantage for him right now. Yeah, the 6.5 compared to the 6.9 behind him. So it's still a great drive, but yeah, Bo's going to be forever regretting that. He probably, if anything, if he didn't make that mistake in the hill corner, on the exit hill corner, probably really just trying to get that extra bit of grip out of that turn and lost it. He's going to get a chance of having a run at Ian Ford yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. He and, had a great run on Ian Ford there. And really, that's a game changer, isn't it? But uh, wasn't able to get that and as a result has suffered. And then, you know, with Sammy Sutton getting stuck behind Mario Vlasic. Mario didn't do anything wrong on that outlap. It was just uh, unlucky for Sam to be positioned there. But again, a game changer and uh, certainly tagged uh, Mario Vlasic. Um, some would say uh, karma's a 
such and such, but um, in this case, and we just commented that Mario's car was nice and clean. It was very, very clean last week as well. So you know, Mario's done some good work over the last two weeks. So congratulations to him, credit where credit's due. However, by saying that, he got tagged by someone else tonight, but life will go on as always next week. Yeah, that's right. We see Marty Carroll's back out on the track now. Uh, don't know what actually happened to Marty. It didn't look like he was in the pits for too long. But his car's looking... Looks good to me. Yeah, maybe the pacemaker might have needed a reboot mate or something. But um, in the meantime, the P11 uh, battle is certainly building up there. We've got uh, Josh Burden. Oh, yeah, and Corey Preston. That was on before. Sorry to our director there, Hugo. Corey, if anything's actually dropped off for a second. And, uh, in case you guys uh, you hear me mention Hugo, Hugo Louise, uh, Formula One expert. I think he came uh, Hugo, ninth on Saturday in the uh, official iRacing Formula One Championship. A good result for you and your team. I think a 129 is pretty handy. Also, good results in the uh, Bronco Endurance Series as well. So, Coanda Motorsports certainly proving to be the strength of the uh, world iRacing circuit at the moment. But there's other teams pegging around Hugo. But anyway, Hugo tells us where he's going to be looking as a director and to what battles. But he's on board with uh, 11th and 12th at the moment, Josh Bird and the GT, GT Omega card just for fun entry. And as I said, with Corey Preston, I think Corey Preston 2077 last lap. 208 flat for Josh Burden, so there is a chance that this might tighten up, but Josh just, just looks that bit more comfortable. I'll tell you where we got a battle. It's uh, Mick Bracknell, Jason Dixon, and Kurt Stenny back here for position 7, 8, and 9. Mick, I don't know if we're seeing the beautiful pink paint scheme that Mick Cracknell's running this week. It's, he's running it as a punishment for taking out two of his teammates on the first lap last week, and um, yeah, so he's uh, sporting the pink paint scheme this week. I'm not sure if it's coming up on the broadcast, unfortunately, but we'll get that uh, sorted for you. And if you uh, if you want to make a little donation to the McGrath Foundation, that's what Mick Cracknell's going to be doing as well. So big shout out for him for doing that. Yeah, the McGrath Foundation very big into uh, women's cancer and breast cancer, I think it is. So yeah, make sure if you get the chance to jump on board and also. Uh, with the uh, children's cancer, if you want to jump on board the V8 Stops site as well, the, um, the Children's Cancer Ooh. Foundation. Steady straight lines it. Straight through Stenberg. That's, it has to, well, he has to let them go through. This is definitely where the battle is right now. Dixon's got a bit of right front damage. Mick Cracknell's car is looking perfectly clean on my screen. See, but unofficially, these guys are STC teammates. Don't be spooked by the SimSpec livery that uh, Dixon runs. These guys run under the same umbrella, but oh, Big's actually on the grass there. Many would say he's been on the grass, but he's actually on the grass to <laughs> stay the first that time. Yeah, but he's done that very cleanly. So his car's oh, as clean as ever. Yeah, no, he's good there. But his car's clean. And uh, like I said, Jason's just carrying that little bit of damage. I don't think Jason made life overly difficult for him. Certainly, Mick Cracknell, the faster of the two. But up in front, they've got another STC teammate, James McKnight. Nugsy is in front of them, sixth position at the moment, after the uh, early dramas with him and Aaron Hamilton. I think he's tagged the walls. Yeah, and I think he's tagged the walls a couple of times outside of that as well. But he's uh, 2075, he's keeping pace certainly with that Daco entry. That's a really clean car that Jake Maloney's driving. Geez, he's in good form, this boy. Got a lot of time for him. Uh, KRF driver, Kimmy's Rule Fencing, where he started in iRacing. So he's certainly progressed very well and uh, just gets stronger and stronger every week. So fantastic to see good Jake as they call him the Daco team and I can tell you why but um, yeah it's great to see him out there at the before these guys the battle with um, third and fourth certainly hasn't gone away with Aaron Hamilton and Bo Cattell and I reckon Bo's just tagged that exit there at Greg Murphy wall as well so he's definitely he throwing be, oh. everything at it oh big four wheel power slide great to watch yeah that it was so it really Aaron up to just, him though yeah so it really parked nice and these cars are looking too pretty but Bo's really driving the wheels of these guys are for the fans. eight and a half. Yeah, eight and a half. 19 seconds away. I don't see Bo Cattell holding on to this much I longer. I think he might just be we've having got, a bit of fun. We've got some drift action here, and I reckon if we jump on board with the Maverick welding car of uh, Aaron Hamilton, not for this lap, but certainly for the next lap as they go over the top, 
certainly interested to see that Osram car in front of Bocatel. Just the drivability of that car it looks awful at the moment, but um, the uh, skill and the reflexes of Bo is certainly keeping that car on the Ooh, track. But Aaron's having a look, Aaron, but he's over I the don't curb. Know if he I needs hope he can to pull it up. So you're lucky. Said, let's just go on board in with Aaron Hamilton, and we're going to turn up the turn up your stereo, and let's just listen to the. Uh, Listen well, to the I don't know if it's great V8. We might have to go on board with uh, Bo. I think we have to go on board with Bo now. Yeah, let's do a lap listening to Bo Catell around so, Mount Panorama. So just quickly, that is the position change. That's third place. Bo's dropped to fourth as we give you one lap of the magnificent Mount Panorama circuit here in New South Wales with Bo Cattell. can tell you as they uh, exit the final turn here in Murray's Corner. I'm so glad I'm not Mo Patel right now but that was unbelievable and hope you enjoyed that view from inside the car number two of Bo Cattell because that car looked like an absolute handful and the reflexes shown by Bo there is, uh, is outstanding really but he's not driving the race that he wants to no doubt uh, with that damage he'd be certainly further at the front driver era way back when I think uh, lap 15 but in the meantime, uh, up at the front, that uh, gaps back out to 5.8 seconds. But this race here between Hamilton and Cattell, I reckon soon is going to be joined by Jake Maloney. He's not that far off these two, certainly putting in some very clean laps and has certainly got the uh, least damaged car out, um, out of the field probably by now, from what I can see. So Jake Maloney now, we're on lap 27, 33 lap race, and Cattell again drifting there, and it's just incredible. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? It was interesting to watch watch how much uh, his hands are working coming across the top there. I'll tell you what else is going on in the race right now, Brenton. Josh Burden and Brenton Hobson. Bit of yeah, Brenton back Hobson. P10. Brenton P10. Hobson, a new pickup for four motorsports, I think he is. Tell me if I'm wrong, I might be. But um, he's done a... Uh, I know Brenton's a bit dirty or a bit upset with himself because uh, my bad first race got... Uh, been on about lap three or four from young Breton's mistake but it was just a mistake no hard feelings if you listen to the broadcast later on old boy but um he's done a good job here but I can tell you what Jake Burden is certainly making some ground and has made some ground Breton got caught up in an earlier incident uh, with Jake Burton is that Corey in the background yeah, again just before Ooh. we came to these guys Corey was on the back of them it was a freeway battle Corey made a mistake in Murray's corner and we just saw him run really wide there again Corey's feeling the pressure. I think he's probably overdriving a little bit, but he's still got a little bit of time with lap 27. Still a good 12 minutes of racing here, so see if Corey can catch back up. Although they're just pulling away from him a bit there. Yeah, that battle for P3 though, I don't think we can take our eyes off that. And no, a move here. just go back up. Yeah, so Bo Cattell's showing 
some fantastic driving to a point. He, it's, it's, it, he's probably struggling with what he's got to work with because that car is not doing what it should be doing. So he's fighting this car the whole way. But I tell you what, Look he's got a magnificent run on Aaron Hamilton here. I just don't think he's got the straight line speed Ooh, out of the car. He's going to have a look. He's he have a look. Oh, big block of the brakes. He had to back out of it. Good driving by Bo. Yeah, he got a lot of time for Bo. He's got yep. some great racecraft, there's no doubt. And he could have easily, easily tagged the back of Aaron there, but really got out of it late. And this is on a car that looks like its tyres are struggling, looks like his steering is struggling as well. So, great job there by uh, Bo Cattell. But this race goes on, and then Aaron, sorry, Jake Maloney forever, ever catching. I don't think he could have put a piece of paper between Bo and the wall there. That was really close. He is definitely driving the wheels off this thing. And the bonnet, and the side skirts, and the rear fender. And with a oh! side oh. oh! How these two have not wiped each other out. Oh, Fantastic but look at that driving. background. That, Jake, uh, Maloney. That Jake Maloney is getting bigger and bigger. Real big. The old, the old Jurassic Park line. <laughs> Objects in the mirror is not as big as they seem. Rubbish. Jake Maloney's getting bigger every second. Let's just go back and have a look at that incident. Well, it wasn't even an incident, really. Look at that. Bo has come down, clipped the curb totally sideways, and just kept it off the wall, kept it off Aaron Hamilton, and just kept on going. Fantastic driving, once again, by Bo Cattell. Yeah, but I wonder if that's put the scare in him a little bit because there's a race to be finished here now. He's in fourth place. There's still some healthy points towards the uh, iRacing official championship here. This is round three, four. Um, four, yep, they you. After uh, Alton Park last week with Ian Ford in the short track having that win and Ethan Rigolt having the two wins before that. So with Ethan not being here this week, it's uh, going to be a lead changing down the order we know that but this will be a drop round for Ethan but it just puts him on the edge a little bit our defending champion and hopefully somebody to do. yeah well, hopefully Ethan's watching the broadcast if you are Ethan mate it'd be great to have you back here and uh, no doubt what you're seeing here is exactly what you can do to another level as well on occasion so hopefully we'll get you back for next week's race I think it's at Lime Park next week as well so that'll be interesting completely different circuit to what we see here definitely it's uh from one extreme to the other, isn't it? And it's going to be really interesting to see the boys going around there. But like I said, though, it's not a matter of packing the V8 setups away just yet. We've got the iRacing Road Warrior at 1000. This is going to be a race which I know has grabbed a lot of attention from drivers all around the world, especially those who are active in the Road Warrior oh. series. And oh, no, you're right, mate. I'm with it there as well. I can see what you're, I can see what you're seeing. Yeah, but you're right. Uh, the the Road Warrior series has got people all around the world. It's the Bathurst 1000. It's going to be really big. It's going to be full of some fantastic iRacing road races. Lots of lots of new names. Uh, it's going to be fully broadcast on RaceSpot oh. TV. And yeah, I reckon the way Bo's racing, he should be part of that. <laughs> well, I'm hoping there's going to be plenty of Aussies on board because it's really a great chance. I know the hour of the day is insane for some Australians there's no doubt but it'd be great to see the good guys the top teams actually no it'd be great to get as many Australian iRacers out there as possible showing the iRacing world this brand the V8 car I believe is the hardest car to drive maybe the lowest 49 might have it cutted but apart from that it's it is such a challenging car we got Marcelo Rivera back with us just quickly Marcelo is he fuel saving no, no I think it. he's all clear now, gentlemen. He's uh, definitely right. pushing on and he's uh, been matching or uh, putting in lap times better than uh, Sam now. So as long as he keeps it clean, he should be right. Too well, easy. Good on you, Marcelo. Mate. Thank you for that, mate. We'll see you back later on. That's just an update. So there we go. The car won the Logitech Holden Commodore Evolution Racing Australia. Logitech car has got the green light for fuel. We kind of thought we had been for a while there. We saw his yeah, lap times ever progressing. Good for a confirmation. Seven. Yeah, well, he's not going to have to back off later on, but um, where Meanwhile, were we before that? Those. Yeah, sorry, the Logi, sorry, the uh, iRacing Road Warrior 1000 starts this week. And like I said, it is an incredibly, uh, uh, to work. be careful here, uh, uncomfortable time for the Australians. But, ooh. There's Bo Cattell having another look at Aaron Hamilton. Now, this is the battle of the race, no doubt. 
but it'd be great to see as many iRacing, Australian iRacing cars out there and showing what the Aussie iRacing community can do. Like, we always come over and play with your GT3 cars in Europe and all that, and they're a great car to drive, the McLaren, the Roof, the BMW, we know it all, we do it all, and got some good results in the Blompain series, but come over the Australian backyard for a while, play in our little house and play with our cars and see how you go. I'm putting a challenge out there. Get your Coanda Motorsports. And, oh, oh, look. Geez. Oh, geez. That's insane. But we want to oh, see all the good Europeans and good Americans here he is out there. Inside. I reckon oh, he's actually probably scared out into that. What no, I don't think he has. He hasn't, he hasn't got, got, got a run. I reckon he's just scared. Uh, no, there was no contact there. I reckon Both he's just scared out into that. But this is just that really showing people who don't race at iRacing how good the platform is. It's amazing, really. Once you try this, oh, you will... No. Oh, no! <laughs> Once you try this, uh, you can't go back to anything anything you've ever tried previously on PlayStation or PC. It's just a one of a kind. I can tell you what, Osram Lightify, uh, they are certainly getting their money's worth tonight, and so they should. Bocatil put on a show, put on a great show. Uh, that last lap, though, uh, 2087, that's way off of Aaron's pace, but now he's got Jake Maloney in a very clean-looking Daco car right on his hammer. They've got a, they've got a lap car in front of them. That's going to be two laps to Lewis go. Perrin. Two, no, no, lap no, three. thirty of a thirty-three laps race. That'll be four laps to go, Sammy. Thirty-one, mate. Don't forget to count the one they're on. It's lap thirty-one. Oh, sorry, I'm on Lewis Perrin's car. Sorry. <laughs> He's got a lap down. He lets them go. Beautiful. Good job, mate. Yeah, good, thank you. It's Monday. Had a bad day. Yeah, how you going, mate? Oh, and Ian Ford's going up to a lap car as well. One Mr. Mario Lasic as they... I'm just going to have a look at uh, Fordy here for a second as he goes through the dipper. So you there's could, no need to push here. You couldn't imagine Bogatel would have much rear tyres left, would you? <laughs> Oh, I don't think he's got much of anything left, including sweat. Oh, well, he's got petrol. <laughs> yeah, he's um, he's riding on rims. Just going to look to see uh, just for myself he's here. He's catching up again. I... He's pushing this for everything he can get out of it. He's he's going to catch up to Aaron again here before this race is over. This is not over. No, this is not over. Just sensational. <laughs> the way that Bo gets into that forest elbow and uh, yeah and look he a bit of yeah it is and Aaron I don't think Aaron Hamilton's ever got a podium in the main street to field Monday night race so that Maverick Welding ERA cars in a position it hasn't been in before but Aaron just loves Bathurst I know that Aaron and Ian Ford are teaming up this Saturday night for the Bathurst Road Warrior 1000 but Bo Cattell certainly hasn't let this go they've got two laps to go just that control of Bose, I'm dying to know what kind of pedals he's got because he seems to have so much control under brakes there. He does, it almost looks like we're broadcasting a dirt rally event at the moment. He's sideways more than he's straight as he well, takes say, uh, lap 32. Well, I should be saying no doubt he's using Logitech pedals there tonight. But a fantastic. He yeah, well, it's a seven flat and a seven six for Aaron in front, so he's gained six tenths. So we know he's the quicker of the two. Two laps to go. This is coming down to the wire. It definitely is, and Aaron's just, you know, like Bo's been smoking his tyres here. They must be just melting off the rim. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be so keen to find out what his temp tyre temperatures are at the end of this race, and. Uh, what tyre temperatures he was running, to, uh, pressures he was running to start with, because they have copped a flogging. And it's yeah. not his best result, he's eaten one of the races before here on the official series on Monday nights before, but I tell you what, it certainly is most hectic and probably is, I'm not going to say his finest drive because it's not a win, but certainly uh, his most exciting drive. Yeah, and look at the control he's got, he's just showing off now. That's enough, Bo. We, we get it, mate. <laughs> he's, probably, he's probably got the broadcast on. If you can hear oh, his bow, take the jump. That. He's <laughs> awesome. Oh, he's just really showing the control he's got. I can tell you, I, I hope he's got the biggest smile on his face, you know, considering he's going to be completely dehydrated by the time he's finished. But that is some awesome car control right there. 
Not sure it's the quickest lap of his because he spent the greater majority of it drifting across the top. But in the meantime, up at the front, sorry to say, I'll just keep my eye on this and, and by all means keep an eye on uh, what Bo Cattell is achieving tonight. Ian Ford's actually just at the start of lap 33, his final lap. Yeah, well, you watch that and I'll keep an eye on Bo because uh, we've got one lap to go. And Jack Maloney has closed the gap a little bit on Bo there. Yeah, and the other battle is going on as well for 11th and 12th with Preston and Josh Bird has certainly closed up as well. So we'll be looking at that after the uh, finish because that's certainly not done and dusted. Yeah, Marty Carroll we've seen back out. Uh, not many other battles there really. So really, Bo Cattell. And, uh, Jack Maloney's yeah, really closed it up. Yeah, he has. Bo's so still sideways. Tell you what, Jake's going to have a fantastic view. You really? probably think that Aaron's away now. 7 4 last lap, oh, he's gained he's that gone. second. Yeah, so let's just think that Aaron's gone. But Bo's certainly, got no Jake Maloney hasn't trees. gone. No. Here comes Jake having a big look. Oh, Jake's oh, Bo, Bo's, Bo's going to the marbles. tag wall. No, nah, he did recovery. Touch the wall. I'm dying to know how much tread he's got left on those cars. I'm thinking uh, 4%. none. In the meantime, then we'll go back on board with Ian Ford. Now, this has uh, been a great effort by Fordy tonight. He'll be super stoked with this. He's just always loved this track. And, and in the uh, Premier Series a couple of weeks ago, was leading that race with uh, 14 laps to go. I think from what I remember, the cars around him in second third had to do a little bit of fuel saving, probably not a lot. They were going to be able to get home as well. But Fordy was leading it, had a screen go blank. His monitor went blank. And uh, only for a short while, he tried to park it on the side of the road to uh, get out of the way and fix it. But unfortunately, he uh, put it into a wall. So that took the uh, win away for Ian Ford and Ben Smith in that Demidov car. However, as he exits the chase for the last time, this has Not been a, a fantastic result. Not a mark Beautiful on it. It's clean. squeaky clean. So Ian Ford has really done, a, you, know, you would say, a dominating performance. He's led from start to finish from pole position. So Very as he solid. exits Murray's for the last time, Ian Ford, the car number one, Logitech Ooh, Commodore. He's burning out he's before good. the he's, start finish line. There's, there's a fine there. That wins <laughs> the uh, round four of the iRacing V8 Supercar Championship here at Bathurst. Sammy Sutton crosses the line in second. Congratulations to him for the Daco car. A good, solid performance. Aaron Hamilton is coming around Murray's now that Maverick welding car looking pretty beaten up battered and bruised but first podium so congratulations to Aaron Hamilton Jake Maloney looking for Bo Cattell out of petrol no Bo out Cattell of, out of coming around Murray's corner right now buddy position no Ooh, he's a, no, out no, of fuel he's dropped out of fuel so oh. what a, he's he's driven the guts <laughs> out of things right he's well done to Bo Cattell and Bravo. Jason Dixon's had an off at the, at the um, chase on the last lap and has let two cars... No, he's out of fuel. Oh, no, no, no. That's not going to be good. That's not going to be good. Going to have to have so a look at the replay back here with Jason yeah, Dixon out of fuel. He's yeah, and taking the shortcut. So let's not leave that because he's rolling around here now. He's completely out of gas. So the, oh. uh, for, the Ford Prius crosses the line in uh, what was 11th place so he'll be really disappointed they dropped quite a few positions that last lap Mick Hammond behind him Greg Sharp we haven't talked about him much at all he's done a really good job tonight considering this is the guy who on the first lap uh, was taken out by who was that by David Haynes so Sharp actually had to pit on lap one and uh, lost a hell of a lot of time but in the end of the day he didn't even go down a lap so Sharpie should be super stoked with that and we'll go to the results and the uh, race is finished here so we've got Sharp will finish 14th Jason Bentz will finish 18th and that will be it for our race when they cross the line Sammy off to the results mate yeah uh, that's right uh, Ian Ford uh, great race finished first Sammy Sutton second Aaron Hamilton great drive by Aaron rounding out the podium we got Jake Maloney James McKnight Bo Cattell who we saw run out of fuel from P5 uh, Mick Cracknell, good run, P7. Kurt Stenberg, P8. Brenton Hobson started 14th, finished 9th, so good job. Joshua Burden, uh, uh, P10. Jason Dixon's rolled across the line, P11. Just a little uh, 
little uh, catch up on what happened there. It's, as he was out of fuel, Corey Preston has hit him, and Corey has been disqualified from uh, not enough inci- uh, from too many incidents. So that's a devastating finish for Corey there. Uh, Michael Hamilton, P12. Greg Sharp started 19th, finished 13th, like you said. Great drive, and then uh, everyone else, mate, uh, off the lead lap. Corey Preston, Lewis Parron, Marty Carroll, Mario Vlasic. Jason Bentz, David Haynes, Marcelo Rivera, Jake Burton, Anthony Mansarella, and uh, Matthew Barron. Yeah, and we'll get on with the interviews quickly tonight. It's a, a long night. It's um, it's a long race and a fantastic effort. And what we've got with us now, for the first time in the uh, Monday official iRacing V8 Supercars Championship, we've got Aaron Hamilton, the Maverick Welding ERA Commodore. Aaron, welcome to the broadcast for the first time on the podium, mate. Congratulations, mate. What a mighty battle you had with not only with Bo Cattell, but also with James McKnight early. You had plenty of drama happening around us. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm utterly exhausted. That was just a tough race and uh, great racing with all the guys. Uh, being on the US server, there's a bit of net code, but I think we all kept it pretty clean. Um, some very tight racing from start to finish. Um, I just kept trying to pull the consistent laps looking after the tyres and um, I had enough fuel so I know Cattell was fuel saving quite a bit there so I just took advantage got in front and didn't let him go yeah and it must have been pretty uh, pretty exciting around the way Bo Cattell was driving that thing was uh, looking like a drift car for those last seven eight laps so mate what was it like in the pilot seat and also with him behind you in the mirror at times Oh, it was scary. Um, I think went over Skyline and I see him he, coming down beside me. I didn't know if he'd outbraked himself or trying to make a pass, but uh, I know you just got to hold your wits and uh, stick on the outside, hold the position. I knew he was fuel saving, so I knew he didn't really want to get past me, so I just had to take advantage of that and uh, keep in front. And yourself, mate, you've been away from iRacing for a while. You had a bit of a break, we see, so, mate, welcome back to iRacing here at Bathurst, certainly one of your favourite tracks. Oh, definitely, I love this track, and uh, you should see me at the uh, next uh, few races on the Monday night. Well, looking forward to that very much, mate. Before you go, then, want to give a shout out to it all? Oh, of course, I have to give a shout out to ERA uh, Maverick Welding. Uh, thank you for uh, sponsoring us. Uh, they're a great sponsor, and uh, this race is for them. Well, Aaron Hamilton, fantastic job to mate. Welcome to the party, mate. Congratulations. Hope to see plenty of that in the future. That Thank was Aaron, Aaron Hamilton there, third place tonight, round four. We've got a hell of a lot of people waiting upstairs tonight. I'm not going to go past this guy. I'm going to I'm going to break rank here. Normally we'd go 3-2-1. Well, let's just pause, out. pause for the we, applause. Bo Cattell. We have yeah, Bo Cattell. Great job, <laughs> mate. <laughs> wow. You have got to tell us what tyres you weren't running at the end. They must have been made out of Play-Doh, mate. Like I said, you're not normally going to be doing an interview tonight, but that was spectacular to watch. Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks, boys. I um, Yeah, it all went horribly pear-shaped on my in-lap where I smacked the wall at the grate. Um, first of many, turned out. And the car had a slight steering twinge from there on and 30 seconds optional. Uh, so I didn't take that. Um, short filled it heaps um, and sort of came out right behind Ian and the little steering twinge sent me around into the fence and then it was trying to save fuel and nurse the injured car home and kept hitting things and yeah it was <laughs> it was actually lots of fun it was a handful though you call that nursing you call that nursing a car <laughs> don't ever ever have children if you call that nursing <laughs> yeah. yeah it was um Oh, I've got to thank Aaron. He was driving exceptionally well, and I can imagine that he was probably covering his rearview mirror because I would have been scaring him a lot. Yeah, he um, he, he said that uh, he was aware that you might have been fuel saving. I mean, what's the story there? You made, um, to be honest, with you, you had such good early race pace, and by the time you made your pit stop, you came out of the pits. By the time Forty had his pit exit as well, you probably would have had a good chance of having a good run there. Tell us a bit about that little mistake there. Yeah, well, I realised I was about 20 or 15 k's down the straight slower after I hit the fence on my in-lap, so I knew I had to come out in front of Forty or right behind him um, to stay with him at least. And, um, yeah, basically I just lit him up on the curb. It's Yeah, it, the car was not ideal, so... Um, yeah, just a just a driver mistake there. wasn't very 
very good, but um, no, I thought he deserved the win, and everyone was racing really clean tonight, so it was awesome. Have you spent the week over playing Dirt Rally at all, Bo? No, I actually went to Bathurst and <laughs> studied all the uh, distances between the, the walls and thought I might give a bit of a drift sesh tonight. Yeah, well, uh, he definitely did it for the fans, mate, and I think you you uh, picked up a few new supporters, so good job, mate. Thanks for the, uh, <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for the entertainment. No worries at all. Yeah. I'm probably still drunk. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bo, you make sure if you get your time to have a look at that broadcast, mate, you are the star of the show, so some great air time for yourself, mate. Is there anyone you thank at all? Yeah, thank you guys at Race Spot. Thank my uh, my team, ANZ and uh, SSR, the Alliance. Um, good job to Brenton, my teammate in ninth, I think he came. Um, yeah, been good fun. Okay, I've probably got Brenton's team wrong, so he's not with Ford Motorsports. I thought I saw him the other week. So, okay, so he's with you guys. Well, it's a great pickup. He's a good stick goal, Brenton Hobson. So, well done to him. But, mate, uh, looking forward to the iRacing Road Warrior Bathurst 1000 this weekend. Quickly, you're running in it, yes or no? Uh, I haven't actually looked at what time it starts. So, depending on what time uh, it starts. It would start in an hour on Saturday. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say no. <laughs> But by saying that, I know that uh, there's heavy negotiations to have a Sunday race, possibly starting, I don't know which state you're in, I'm going to say New South Wales, Victoria probably, so probably start about 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon, but that hasn't been announced yet, just stand by, it might be, not making any promises, but there's a fairly decent chance that there's going to be a iRacing Road Warrior 1000 that's suitable for Australia, and so Bo, good job tonight mate, looking forward to seeing you from here on in. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Good job, mate. there, and uh, yeah, it was a good job. It was an awesome job. There's a lot of people up there waiting. We've bring the got... winner in, and then maybe we can bring them all in for a bit of a group session. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, bring the winner in tonight. Sammy Sutton was there before, but he's uh, had to leave probably a bit late night. Um, but with us in the meantime, the Logitech Commodore tonight of Ian Ford and the Evolution Racing and Car from pole position 40 looked like he did it pretty tough for the first five or six laps then seemed to settle into your groove a bit more congratulations on what was a fantastic win here for round four yeah thanks man um just went with a new direction with a few things um with courtesy of marty carroll who gave me a few pointers before the race because well, we've just been bouncing from setup to setup all week uh we had a good car in the cold for the 1000 but just translating into the hot temperatures here we didn't have it quite spot on so you know, I knew the first couple of laps would be a struggle, but I just kept my head down, kept on pushing as hard as I could, tried to tried to break that one-second DRS gap that seems to be there down the straight. Um, and, you know, just finally managed to get there. Um, it, was, it was pretty dramatic around the pit stop time, though, so... Like, um, I was watching Sammy Sutton come out of the pits on the relative and saw that he came into traffic and everything, so I knew that I had to stay out and, you know, burn up the tyres a bit more. And then I saw Bo pitted, and usually Bo saves a bit of fuel, and he was in the draft, so I just assumed that he was going to light fuel it. So I tried doing the same thing, came out just ahead of him, so it would have been a hell of a drag race to turn two, but he must have looped it or something like that. And, um, yeah, just drove this Logitech car all the way home. Absolutely great to have them on board. Um, you know, they, they supply the greatest pedals with the G27. I haven't tried the G29, but hopefully someone can hook me up there, but... You know, awesome colour scheme car, very, very stressful race for the first half, and then the second half just had to make sure we can make it home and manage the gap. Well, because this week, mate, to be fair, has been a bit of a struggle for you at Bathurst. I'm not sure what your your finishing percentage is, but I know the uh, V8 Scops Bathurst 1000 was on a couple of weeks ago, 14 laps to go, I talked about in the broadcast, but... It, it's uh, a significant win tonight. It's a great win tonight, but surely a little bit of uh, you must feel a little bit better about things there now. Oh, you know, just definitely showed tonight how much pace we had in this um this sort of car. So, you know, I got to about 15 laps to go and started, you know, having nightmares almost. Like started getting the whole jitters up through the top of the mountain, just thinking that, you know, all the bad things that happened the week ago were going to happen again. So, I just had to really you know, just head down, drive as hard as I could, manage the car, all that sort of thing, and, you know, hopefully no no issues happen again, but um, it sort, it sort of resolves it, but it is Bathurst 1000, so I have to go back next year and try the same thing. 
Well, no, you don't have to go back next year because this week, in fact, on uh, Saturday night late and possibly, probably on Sunday, the official uh, Bathurst 1000 for the first time is going to be coming out as well. Sorry, a bit of noise in the background. Um, so the official iRacing Bathurst 1000 is coming out this weekend. You've got a chance of driving in that. And if so, who are you driving that with? Oh, definitely going to be driving the Logitech um, Holden once again. It, it definitely seems to have the pace since we won on debut. Well, Monday night debut with it, so that's a good good sign. And um, I believe I'm driving with Aaron Hamilton, who also finished third tonight and did a bloody great job holding off some of the best drivers on um, iRacing. So, you know, definitely head down. Hopefully we get the setup right for the 1000 once again and hopefully get a win there. If not, it's all heads down to get a, um, the GT sorted for Brands Hatch and the V8 sorted for next week. Well, mate, good job tonight winning round four here of the official iRacing V8 Supercar Championship. Mate, is there anyone you can give a shout-out to at all? Oh, definitely a shout-out to Marty Carroll for the bit of advice. Uh, Aaron Hamilton for finishing third and, you know, probably putting up with me for the 1,000 once again. That's that's a pretty stressful job. And <laughs> you guys... You guys for definitely putting on the broadcast. Awesome job once again. Can't wait to go back through it and relive it all over again. Um, and also Maverick, Demidov, everyone that does the job, and Logitech for coming aboard this week. Hopefully hopefully they enjoyed what they saw, and, you know, hopefully we get this car in victory lane a lot more. Mate, super job tonight, and uh, whilst you and I were talking, Sammy's decided to invite the entire Christmas party with him, so <laughs> we've got a... <laughs> We've got a few of the boys here. We've got uh, Crackers, Jake Maloney. Great job tonight, Jake. Josh Bird and Stanny. Marty Carroll. Marty, uh, first of all to you, mate. The SDC car, the race didn't uh, go as it seemed tonight. Welcome to the coverage, mate. Uh, what happened just quickly for you? Oh, I was having a good little battle down the back there. Uh, I didn't have much warm-up time. I was too busy helping Ian. But um, no, it was good to see the the new Logitech livery out there doing well, so congratulations to him and uh, Sammy Sutton, Bocatel on the podium, but uh, no, I just caught, got caught out with this uh, priority server stuff that's going on, and so we had a lot of ping within the server, and it was quite difficult to sort of, to want to make passes with as a lot of the cars were moving around on the track, and unfortunately I got caught out with that, just getting close to the wall, and you know, normally you get a bit of uh, net prediction contact, you know, might pull a guard off or something and then replace it, but uh, sort of put me put me steering out by about 45 degrees, so sort of a couple minutes uh, to get that repaired and got back out on track. And, you know, a little unfortunate, I had a top 10 car there, but uh, no, all in all, still enjoyable race out there and uh, look forward to go back and watch the broadcast. And to you, Stenny, uh, whatever you call this race, Netcodeville, I believe. Mate, did you have dramas <laughs> tonight at all? Uh, yeah, it's in, back in the field, it's a bit uh, warpy trying to follow people when people are going into walls and stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, I broke the steering at uh, Reed Park. I was trying to keep Jason behind me, and, yeah, it didn't turn very well after that. <laughs> Not sure if you've got a dog in the background with a squeaky toy or mate, but it uh, looks like sounds like it's having a, having a bit of fun there. Mate, apart from that, how was your race? Yeah, it went pretty well and up until then. So, yeah, but yeah. Uh, started 12th. Was just being careful because it's so hard to overtake people with the way the server is. And, um, yeah, after I hit the wall, I was just trying to bring it home without hitting anything. But as always, next week to you, Jake Maloney. Mate, you certainly didn't have any problems passing people tonight, mate, in that Deco car. A fantastic job, mate. Tell us a bit about your race. Yeah, it was a pretty good race. A uh, bit surprised to qualify up in fourth, but um, pretty good. Uh, just sort of stayed there, dropped back a bit after the pit stops and um, sort of got fought my way back through a bit. And then the last lap I noticed, or second last lap I noticed, Bo started fuel saving, so... And then coming up to turn two on the last lap, I figured I might as well have a go. Now I wasn't sure how tight he was on fuels, so we went for a bit of a dive bomb and got it in there and ended up fourth, which was a pretty good result. And mate, got to be congratulations to yourself for the result a couple of weeks ago, mate. Long time since you're in uh, Kimmy's Rural Fencing, the KRF team, mate. So, mate, it's just the natural progression, mate. You've done so well. Super happy for your performances so far, mate. How's the team settled into you? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, been enjoying it a lot. Um, 
yeah, it's been pretty good. Mate, uh, that's, uh, we're going to keep things going here. Crackers yourself in that uh, pink mobile tonight, mate. Uh, yeah, pretty good race. So certainly some close incidents over the top there, mate. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it was standard race. Started seventh, finished seventh. Um, the pink mobile went okay. Um, just had an extra long pit stop because I, I forgot to reset my fuel back to the 30 litres I was going to put in. And, I, and by the time I realised, there was 110 litres in it. So I lost a heap of ground there, but... Um, that raw car felt okay, um, but yeah, as far as pink goes, I can, I'll, I'll wait to get rid of it. Another week, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I'm just glad, I'm just glad it's not the Ford, because then I'd have to look at a big pink bulge, and that wouldn't be good for anybody. Do the crime, do the time, I say, mate, but to all of you, the iRacing, <laughs> well, sure the Road Warrior Series. Yes, I do. Uh, the iRacing Road Warrior Series Bathurst 1000 is up this week. Hopefully you're going to get a strong Australian contention. Is uh, everyone here going to be on board for that? Uh, thinking about it, Marty. Yeah, we'll be there, for sure. Good to see, and hopefully the uh, Daco team and TTR, TTL, everybody else will be there as well. It's uh, going to be a good event for motorsports, so... Anyway, it's getting on quite late, Sammy. Mate, that was a uh, bloody exciting race. The star of the show certainly tonight was Bo Cattell. A fantastic job by him. Didn't get the reward he deserved at the end, but no doubt he'll look back and have a bit of a laugh about that. But certainly the uh, race dominated tonight by Ian Ford. Yeah, it was a fantastic race, and Bo Cattell put on a great show for all the fans and had lots of people viewing live and just a uh, great event. So thanks to everyone for... Showing your support and thanks for all the all the all the races you uh, you all drove really well tonight and yeah, it was great to watch. As we said, don't forget to go to Simspec's Facebook page. Uh, there's a code there that if you enter that, you could be in the running for a button box. I'm not sure when does that finish, Sammy? Do you know? Uh, you have it's going to be drawn just before the start of next week's race. So I would say you want to be in that competition by Sunday night, mate. Monday lunchtime at the latest. So Lime Rock Park next week, that'll be round five of the official V8 supercar racing. Hugo, start playing some music, mate. We're getting out of here real soon. Mate, uh, good effort tonight, Sammy. It's a long race, 33 laps. Really good job, mate. Look forward to working with you next week. Thanks to all our drivers. Congratulations to our podium getters, Ian Ford, Sam Sutton, and to Aaron Hamilton. Sammy, we'll see you next week. There's a broadcast, by the way, actually. We're going to clear it up. The Bathurst 1000 on Saturday night is being broadcast, the top split on race spot. So make sure you get the time to have a look at that if you're not racing in it. I'm Brett O'Brien. That's Sammy Compton. Everybody have a really great week. We'll see you on the special time of next Saturday night for what is the official V8 Supercar Bathurst 1000. <laughs>